Hey everybody, we played hooky for a couple of weeks. <laughs> that was because I was getting ready for the workshop. And if you haven't seen the video for the workshop yet, well, I'll tell you it's noisy and it's silly. And we're not really teaching anything much. We're just showing what we did. But you really ought to come and have a look at it because these girls did a great job. We did three projects because it was three days long. <clears throat> Excuse me. We did Sweetheart Cuff, which is tissue decoupage. We did Wonky Wire Bracelet, which you may have seen some of those videos already. But these girls, you should see Javi's. Javi, you didn't bring it to work today, no. did you? Fooey. Well, we'll show you another time then. Maybe we'll show you on Sunday if she remembers. Um... So we had everybody interpret it differently. They just beautiful. Jo Erica Price made oh such a beautiful one. Karen Eaton made some really pretty ones. Gail Fleury made a gorgeous. Everybody made beautiful, beautiful ones, really. And then um, on Sunday we did kinship sinkers. <clears throat> and as I predicted, most people didn't completely finish, but some did. So um, you need to come and look. I think Linda Nunez is, is on there. You could see hers. Hers is a two-part. Or if not, if you get my newsletter, look in there today. If you haven't opened it, it's in your mailbox if you get it. Um, if you haven't gotten it before, go to my website, scroll down to the box, and uh, subscribe because you'll like it. But anyway, today, the reason I'm here is because I have two sweetheart cuffs with me. This is the one that was the sample. I don't know if, can you zoom in on this? I'll show you guys better in a minute, but maybe for now she can zoom. Is that showing up better? She says yes. This is Sweetheart Cuff, okay? I have this one. This was the original one that I designed some time ago. And then I made this one at the class when I was playing along with the rest of them. And I have to tell you, I could not believe the beautiful cuffs these girls put together. Nobody struggled with it. They just boom, boom, boom. Uh, some of them made three or four. <laughs> so that was good. Anyway, I have these two here. And then I'm going to have you come on over here now with me. I'm going to show you how this goes together, the products that you need to make it, and what it looks like first before it goes together. Okay, so come on over here because I'm talking like I have all day, and I don't. <laughs> Hubby wants to go home at some point. So come on over. Ready? Yep. Okay, guys. Well, let's go for it. Now, to do this project, <clears throat> you're first going to need an indent cuff, which looks like this from our website. <clears throat> now, you can use really any cuff you have, but the reason I like the indent cuff is because you have so many possibilities. You can inlay into it. Or you can put something over it and it will grasp most of your glue and lay nice and flat. Now, if you put this on a rounded cuff that doesn't have the indent, this might stick up high on it and leave you with high edges. Which is okay, but it leaves you also more possibilities of getting it stuck on something and tearing off when you're wearing it and all that. But this one, not so much. You're going to be good. This is what it will look like when they're put together. You can see this is not up too high, just a little bit. So it just kind of goes down flat, which is very good. So that's what you want. So these are two pieces, the indent cuff and the sweetheart plaque. Both of them are on the bisuboutiques.com website. And when Javi renders this, we'll get her the item number so that you can go there and find it. Okay. Um, basically, these are the two pieces of brass that you need. Then you're going to need good old Mod Podge or whatever it is that you like to use that's like Mod Podge. I like Mod Podge, but there's Collage Podge and there's a few others too. So whatever you have that works, that's like the Mod Podge you need. And you will also need some itty bitsy piece, pieces of paper, tissue. Some were asking this morning, could I use like old rag paper out of old books or dictionary pages or Bible pages or whatever of an old Bible. And the tissue-like ones you could but they might be so thin that they'll become transparent and show what's ever printed on the back. See, there's nothing printed on the backs of this, these pieces. Well, this bleeds through, but um, these are plain on the back. Um, also, if you want to use old books and you think that the paper is fine enough, because it really needs to be something like tissue, very, very fine, thin, then you want to make sure 
that if you're using an old book, maybe one of those old rag paper books, like from before 1920, 1915, something like that, you need to be sure you do not have a valuable book. If that book has colored plates, I think they call it, <clears throat> or pictures in it, it could be valuable. You'll also need to check and make sure it's not a first edition. How do I know this? I used to do some book stuff, plus I worked in a library for quite a while years ago. So just make sure you don't have a valuable book. Excuse me, valuable book. It's just like responsible repurposing with the jewelry stuff. This is with the paper stuff. Be sure you don't have something valuable before you start tearing it down. Okay? So you need tissue paper. I'm going to say tissue paper because I know tissue paper works. If you want to experiment with something else, that's up to you. One more tip about tissue paper. You can make your own printed tissue paper. We have on the Bisu Boutique's website in the tutorials section a really lovely tutorial from Sunny Puckett that shows you exactly picture by picture how to do it. It is not hard. You simply scan whatever image that you want to make it from into your computer. It could even be, you know, something like this or this, what you already have, so that you can repeat it. And then you tape it to a piece of cardstock and then run it through. Voila, through your printer. That's all those people do on Etsy that have those kind of pa papers. If you do it and you want to sell them, they'll make sure that you have stuff you're allowed to sell. I'm not going to do it to sell. <laughs> I don't need that problem. So tissue paper. Also, um, you might want to apply a little bit of Perfect Pearls to it to embellish it. Um, so I, I have some out. I have some turquoise and blue patina perfect pearls you can pick whatever you call, color you want I just tend to favor these colors um, and then I like this stampendous clear in, embossing ink because it's like um, a dauber on the top we carry this product at the website by the way and we have a few perfect pearls too um, you have to put this down first to get your perfect pearls mica powder to stick so they go hand in hand. Perfect pearls, clear embossing ink. You can use a pad, you can use this. I just prefer this. But an embossing ink pad will work too. It must be clear embossing ink. Okay? And then you're going to need a little bit of E6000. Good old E. Here's a new one. Excuse me. E6000. Oh, hey, I'll tell you something. E6000 has an odorless formula now. And we have it at the website. And the girls last weekend, they tried it. And <laughs> their jury was kind of out. It sticks, but it takes a lot longer to cure. But it does not smell. It also, if you get it on your fingers, it has kind of a different feeling texture. Of course, you want to avoid getting it on your fingers. But some, sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes it happens. And the old school style, it'll peel off. And you can get it off fairly quickly. This takes a little bit longer. You could use uh, acetone, goo gone, stuff like that. You have to scrub. So you know, even even though with the other one, you still have to wait like 24 hours or like another day until it cures. To to cure it, yeah. You know they're going to cure it for a while anyway. It just it cures. It takes longer. Like with these 6,000, you use it, and after two or three hours, it's starting to set up. With this stuff, it'll be a little longer. But it, it's still toxic, so. <laughs> but it doesn't have that horrible smell. Yeah. It really, truly doesn't. And then for your finish over top at the end, you might want to use some good old diamond glaze. And I do it on a sponge, OK? That's enough of that, Yak. Let's do one, all right? Already? Let's do it already. Here's, here <laughs> it is up close. Here, let me get it up. Here it is up close. I love these colors. Okay, and then um, this is the initial one that we used for the sample for class that I made quite some time ago. And I embellished it a little bit with the pearl chain up here, but you know, you could do whatever you want. And here it is inside. I torched the inside of this one. Okay, and it really came out good. So anyway, th those are two that I haven't really embellished this yet. I need to put a little bit of something on here to embellish it, but I, actually I like it even as it is. I mean, let me put my hand down. It's pretty. Very pretty. Okie dokie. So I'm going to show you my technique for doing this. First of all, we have to do the decoupage part, which you might have seen. Watch me spill this all over. I look like a moron. You know, I'm good at those things. That's probably why you like to tune in, though, right? 
<laughs> Let's see what goofy thing she does this time. <laughs> well, we see your mistakes and then we're, we're, we're now, on I'll that. just say, hey, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, don't spill it. I don't <laughs> worry about having these old sterile videos, you know. It's like, I am who I am and it is what it is. You want to hand me a little um, uh, paper towel? Man, the, the words are not coming. Alrighty, so now I've got one of these little cups with some of this Mod Podge in it. Very simple. If you guys have not used Mod Podge before, I, I've chosen a piece of paper that I like, and it's going to go right dead straight in the middle here. Because go, if you <coughs> apply it over all this bumpy stuff, it's just not going to look that cool. You need to do it on a pretty much flat surface. So now this is a little bit too big, but I will just tear it away. So somebody was showing how you can uh, wet it and it'll tear away too. With water? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Water on your finger and then tear it away. I was trying to cut it close to the thing. Yeah, you know, if it goes it over, come if it goes <laughs> over a little bit, it's not a big deal. But you know, it's nice if it doesn't. Okay, so I just kind of coated the middle part. Okay. Let's just set this. Now I'm going to put this on. And sometimes it's a little fussy, but this is probably the fussiest part about it. And then, you know, when you're doing decoupage, getting it over your Mod Podge stuff, you want to make sure that you've got Mod Podge under all the surfaces you want to cover. Because if not, you'll have an issue that you won't like. Okay, so this is going over a little bit too far, so I'm just going to fill. Well, anyway, I'm going to tear it away. Oh, sometimes I use my scissors, sometimes I use my fingers, but this is wet with Mod Podge. Okay, now don't worry about it. You don't want it to wrinkle. This is the hardest part. Look at that mess. <laughs> yeah, she can do this. But you know what? This is not hurt. If yours does this, don't sweat it. You know, you can just peel it right back off. Right? Yeah, you can peel it right back off. What happened is I got some on my fingers. So that shows you there, too. Try not to do that. But I'm going to just, you can just layer this stuff. Yeah. The thing is, is try to keep it off your fingers. But that's hard when you're first putting it down. So maybe what you might want to do is take one of these foam brush things and it's, just push yeah. it. Necessity is the mother of invention. So you can take this thing and also get the little bubbles out. Now you can see I got a piece here that didn't cover, but kind of torn away. Don't sweat that either. Covered off my finger. Because you're going to cover it again. Now, if you get it really good the first time, the first pass, then you don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to tear this away. It's better if I would have got this a little bit closer, but I'm going to take it here and just run it around. That water method that Cindy showed us at the group was really good. Just tear it away. I was this, trying to peel it with my finger. Yeah, fingernails. this does not have to be all exact. What I liked about this, if I'd gotten it exact, is the way the words came out. You could kind of sort of read the, the script, but um, it's okay the way it is. Because I'll show you how we're going to fix this up. And you guys out there that are good at decoupage and all that, you know, if you want to leave some tips, that's great. We'd love to hear them if you do it with love. And remember that if you've not done it on brass before, it's a little bit of a different animal than when you do it on a box and all that. It ha you have to use this real fine stuff. You know, you can use those heavier decoupage papers when you do it on a box. But this one, no. So, okay, so now you can see I've got some little spots that I've got to cover. But this is why, too, that the Perfect Pearls comes in really good. But well, I don't want to put Perfect Pearls all over the middle. Then you're not going to see any of your designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tear off another little piece of this stuff. And I'm going to just kind of fit it up where I want it to be. And I'll apply it. Now this almost kind of wants to stick by itself because there's Mod Podge. You know what? There is Mod Podge under it. So I'll just press it down. There's enough. There's enough. There yeah. And then I'm going to take just another little tiny piece. And I'm going to see if I can just kind of fit it up. Yeah, that initial part is the hardest part. The rest of it, there's nothing to it. Believe me, it's just fun time. So I get just a little bit in there, and a little bit in here, and a little bit here. Okay? So then I have my places to 
put my stuff to it. So now I'll put this down and in the interest of it working better, I'm going to do it this way. This is something I just figured out. You know, that's what's so great about making mixed me media jewelry. So often you have your happy accidents as you go along and they help you out and other people. I just had one. This is a happy accident meaning it turned out good and I found out something new in the process. So it's all good. Okay, I want to get a little bit more on there, so I'm going to... Here's a little te teeny piece of paper I like. I love these script papers. You know they don't make this one anymore. Wouldn't you know it? So this one would be a really good one for you to make your own because since they don't make it anymore, uh, you take a piece of it and you know scan it into your computer so that you can continue to make it and if you get like that um, beige or gold kind of looking um, tissue paper tissue paper I shouldn't have done that yeah you can always type some wonderful words in there. yeah you I can like how they did you know that. you can you know you can make your own easy and you can use it all over so I'm not going to use all this up before I do that okay I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of fix that up. So I'm just getting this all patched up however. But if you use that new technique I showed you for covering this, you may not have to do all this. So I've kind of got it, you know, mixed up a lot. But that's okay. You just keep going till you like it. I wouldn't say you want to do more, you know, like two, three layers on here though, because it'll start getting glurpy and weird. Like we showed you with the beads. It's the same thing as the beads. Now, I had to put this over top too. You know when you decoupage, you put the uh, collage medium under and you have to put it on top. So when you do it under, you want to make sure you don't have air bubbles or stuff that didn't cover or stuff that's sticking up. That's all very important. Get your Mod Podge under. And because this is tissue, I'm just going very easy because I don't want it to rip again. Pretty much like dabbing it? Yes, I'm just dabbing it. And then I've got some other stuff left, so I'll just try and clean that up on the side. And some can remain, because I'll show you why. Uh, Mod Podge can act as medium for ice enamel. Did you know that? Yeah. It can. So you don't have to have the medium from ice enamel company. You can do it freely. And I'm going to show you how. But I'm going to have to get Javi to help me. Yeah. Could you go over there toward the corner and find either turquoise or ivory ice enamel? And then I'm going to need my heat gun, which is down here. So I'm just going to keep going while Javi's looking for that. And I'm going to do the sides. You don't have to do the middle. In fact, you'd probably rather not because you've got a glue to this. That, that'll, that'll work. That works. It's a good one. And th that Perfect. And then I need my heat gun. Oh, heat gun. Yeah, because you can't make it work without a heat gun. It ain't going to work without a heat gun. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and put this on and just let that sit for a minute. Thank you, honey. Oh, this looks nasty. This <laughs> yeah, is a t you could tell this is a heat gun that's been well used. I have all these pretty new ones, but they're up in my show stuff. They're upstairs. <laughs> oh, that stuff, yeah. Okay, so I've got a piece of this nice script stuff, and I'm just going to kind of randomly put it on here. And with the cuffs, some people last weekend were kind of wrapping them around the edges. Um, I'm not into that look, but if you are, then do what makes you happy. This is all about making you happy and coming out with a nice clean look at the end. Do you just cut off the axis with the scissors? I can. I'm going to do it right now. It's just hard when you do it in the middle of here because it's lumpy bumpy but here you know and you can always clean it up at the end when it's hard to so yeah, it's no big deal. Or fold it through over to the other side but then you'll have a raggedy edge in there and you may not like that so that's up to you. It's your deal. Okay so now what I'm going to do of course I have to do it over top as well so I'm going to use this one. <laughs> And once again, dabbing motions. Dab it only. Now, on the sides, I really like to layer it a lot. 
I mean, not like five layers thick or anything, but a good bit. And once again, the reason we want to do a lot of dabbing and not get it too thick, which I just did, <laughs> is because it's tissue paper and it can tear easily. So this kind of decoupage is just a little different than your typical decoupage you do on paper mache or glass or pottery or whatever like that. It's basically the same, but just a tad, tad bit different. It's a little bit more delicate. Okay, if any gets in here, don't sweat it. You can clean it up later with soap and water. This one was torched. So you can see the torch marks in here. Why did I do that? Because I like the way it looks. That's why. For me, it's more finished. But if you don't want to do that, you can wait till you get your design done and you can paint it inside and then diamond glaze over it so it stays nice. However you want to do it. It's up to you because it's your deal. Could you spray paint all of it? Yeah, you, you yep. Some of them did that this weekend. Mm -hmm. You could just cut to the chase and spray paint it. But on the top, if you spray paint it, if you get it on the top, you got to take a piece of, um, <clears throat> oh, steel wool or, you know, you're, you're distressing things. And you have to um, try and, you know, rough it up. For the stamping or for the tissue paper? You have to wrap, wrap it. If you're going to paint first before you put the tissue paper mm -hmm. on, you're going to have to rough it up a little uh, first. Okay. Yeah. To just yeah. grab some. Right. Grab. Yeah. 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 You got it. You got it, kid. All right. So now this is sticking up. So you know what I got to do. I got to get it down. And see, I don't have anything down here. I don't know if you noticed that. So I've got to get something on there. But this pretty much shows you, you know, how it goes. And then I'll let this dry a little bit. And um, I'll come back and I'll <clears throat> finish this part. And you can see how that goes. How about that? Well, I'll do it like this. And I still don't have anything there, so i got to get a piece of something in there. Tiny piece. It can be all raggedy. I prefer it that way. If you don't, then you know, do it however you like. It's all good. It's just all every witchy way. Okay. So now I'm gonna put a little bit more over top. Excuse me. And you know, if you would miss some and you get done with it you even have your sweetheart plaque on top you can go back in there and put a little bit more on you can always trim it up put a little more on however and another reason why i like mixed media because so much of it is water-based and very forgiving and you just don't have to worry so i don't know if you can see this real good but i've just got layers of stuff on here one after the other and of course the white stuff you see is mod podge it's not dry yet okay Alrighty, so now I'm going to go back to this. And as you can see, the Mod Podge is starting to dry, but it's not completely dry. So if I want to do um, ice enamels on here, now anything that's wet, I want to get out of the way because <clears throat> when I do these, I don't tend to do it from the back. Another thing I have to do is <clears throat> if I just completely um, do the heat over top of this, on here, this is going to melt because this is plastic. So I've got to put a little bit of paper down under it. I could, well, yeah, I could do that. But there's a fire brick in the back of that. Let's try this. I, what do I got to lose? A fire piece of fire brick, right? There are better things. The no stick. You know what? The no stick things would be better. Anyway. Yeah, I'll just do it. I'll do it on this black. This, this is where I torch. Not the best choice, but it works. For you guys, I would recommend a piece of that, you know, that brown silicone type paper that you peel everything off of. Okay, I've got Mod Podge down in here. I told you you guys can do ice enamel on the Mod Podge. So, I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm not going to do it from underneath. Because I want to see where it's going. Okay, so now... I'm going to close this up because I don't want ice enamels. <laughs> no, I, I don't, you know, it, they, they will too. I did a video. I had to take it down. It was so bad. Whoops. Okay, let's go over here. This is very hot. If you guys have one of these, I have raised patina with one of these before. So be careful. Don't get your hands in. 
I just go over this until I see it bubble. And it takes a little bit of time and not much. Just keep watching for when it bubbles. That means, now see, it's, did you see that? It's starting to bubble. That means it's melting into each other. That's what you want. See, did you see that? There we go. See that? So would you stop at that point? Uh-huh, yeah. Once it bubbles, you don't want it in your, you don't want to keep on going because if you do, it'll get to the place where it'll just peel off. Okay, so you don't want that. Now, in a perfect world, I wish for a little bit more up there, but I'm going to do something different. But for now, I'm going to set this aside and do my other side because that's hot. Very, very hot. Yeah, I'm looking here into the iPad so I can see a little bit better from a different perspective. This isn't as evenly sprinkled. This is a little heavy, so I'm going to have to compensate. This one's a little bit more. So I'll, I've got a trick up my sleeve, and I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to get burned. Okay, so going back to this, I'm going to keep putting on paper and do this side. Yeah, I put this clear placemat thing down today, but really a better choice would have been the silk. It's just, I don't know, that brown color, it just doesn't... Uh, video or photograph so well. We used to use it upstairs when we did the live sessions and people had trouble seeing. It was murky looking and I mean if you're just you know if you're just working on your own you don't need to worry about that. Go for it. You know nobody's mm -hmm. watching you but in my case because I'm trying to show you guys I have to look for things that um, you know will photograph a little better. So okay so I've got it all done. So I've got a big piece here. I'm gonna go very gently. If it wrinkles a little bit, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Don't worry about it. We'll get it later. <clears throat> we'll get this at the end after everything's down. Let's see what else do I have that would be pretty. Pretty. This is the Tim Holtz paper that I'm tearing up now. The script paper was um, Seven Gypsies, which I love, but I don't know why they quit making it. They had all different kind of styles of it, and it was fantastic paper. Now I have my little stash. I have my little stash, and I don't share it with anybody. <laughs> but like I say, whatever you like, you know, you can make your own. And that's probably what I'm going to do eventually, because I would hate to be without this stuff. So I put a little bit of French paper over top. See this here? Don't even, don't even worry about that. That is not an issue. Just leave it there. Save your time for other things. Do a little itty bitty piece, maybe halfway here. Okay, this is dry enough back here. I think I can. It dries pretty quick. And like if you, you know, if you're pulling on this and you pull a little up a little bit, you put a little bit, pull a little bit too much off, so you just cover it. Unless your heart was set on that piece, and then in that case, then you'll be sad. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. I don't like um, precisely cut pieces on here because it just... It takes away from the wonderful random randomness that you achieve when you do mixed media. So, personally, um, I don't like to do it that way. I like to tear it. It's good to tear it. So I'm going to just tap that down. And maybe I will... A little bit more under here. Yeah, that's good. And then I'll get it over the top of the rest too. Because remember, it goes under, but it goes over as well. You gotta get it over as well as under. <clears throat> now, if you're in a big fat hurry with this stuff, you can use your um, heat tool on it. 
but don't put it up as as close as I did with the the turquoise uh, ice enamel because it will just get a little hot. You remember how the ice enamel bubbles? You could cause some Mod Podge to bubble. So it's better if if you let it air dry, unless you want to put some ice enamel on it later. In which case, actually, if you want to put ice enamel on it, the time to do it is now. <clears throat> So I'm going to just try that and see how that goes a little bit. I'm just going to sprinkle this a little bit random. Time to do it is now. The reason I say time to do it is now because this is um, a good place for you to use your heat gun because remember the Mod Podge is the medium. You can use it as the medium to get it to stick. So for that you got to have wet, wet Mod Podge. But if you got Mod Podge by itself, I would just say let it cure on its own. And I like to be very random with this delicate as I can. I'll get that out of the way. Alrighty, so now this is cool enough that I put. So I'll bring this back. And I'm going to have to leave my hand there, but I'll just try to keep it out of the way. Go. Cool. <laughs> and then I'll turn it on, pointing away from me. And just keep your heat this way the other way, away from your hand. You don't want to get burned. I think you'll be fine so long as you... See how it wants to bubble up there? That will be taken care of though when we put the diamond glaze finish on. Which I'm not sure we'll be able to do, but I can kind of demonstrate a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to let it set because it's starting to burn me a little bit. So I'm just going to go this way. You can see better the other way, but I don't want to get burned, guys. So I'm just watching for it to bubble up. Okay, that's good enough. So now we have to let this cool down. Whoopsie! we got to let this cool down. Then we can put it on the other side if we want to. This one I didn't. This is just the shiniest diamond glaze. And it was sponged on. But there was little perfect pearls too. So, yeah, it changed the patina inside because it'll do that. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for now. Now I'm going to work on fixing this. Because this is just kind of glurped together and not in ways I like it. So, the way I'm going to fix this, I'm going to do a little bit of perfect pearls and see what happens. So I take my embossing clear ink and just kind of dab it hither and yon around the edges. Actually, yeah, there's plenty. You can see it's running out over there. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to decide which color. So let's we can decide together. This is the turquoise. See it? I don't know, there might not be enough light for you to really tell. And then there's this blue patina, which is a lot lighter. How about if we try both? Why not? You can always blend them, right? <laughs> now, once I would get this dirty and I would get Mod Podge, and I want to go sticking it back in there because you'll pollute it and, and mess it up. But you could put it in a cap or something first. <clears throat> but for now, I'm just going to do this. And you want to get it on before, <clears throat> see now, I'm going to have to use another corner so I don't pollute it. Before your embossing ink dries all up. That wouldn't be good either. Okay, let's have a look at how that looks. Oh, that's pretty. But you know what, I think I'll use this corner and go into this lighter stuff here. Hmm, I'm running out of corners. <laughs> Let's get another brush. These don't cost much. Let's show everybody how to be wasteful. <laughs> this is how to be wasteful with all your stuff. What, what are they, a pack for a dollar? Um, I, I don't know. I buy them like a whole case of them. Oh. Like, you know, so I think the fewest I've ever bought at a time was like 48. Really? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They aren't, they're not very expensive. You're right. So now I brush that. And you can just keep teasing it, going over it, teasing it, going over it as long as you want. You know, I get some of this off of here. You know, you just 
play with it till it looks like you want it to look. Okay, let me get this out of here. And hopefully that will even it up a little bit for us. So actually, the way this is, I got so much um, of the turquoise, it should just been a light sprinkling. I got so much you can't hardly see my paper in. So that's pretty much how I'm going to leave it. I may go back and do some repairs on it later, but I'm glad I messed some of it up because it shows you what happens if. And a lot of these kind of craft programs don't show you that. So now this is a little bit warm still. So what it's going to look like, though, is I will glue this to here. And then I'll embellish. So I kind of like the sandy look of that over there. So I'll probably put a little bit on this side too. To glue it, let me give you a few tips. This is what I like to do. I'm not going to glue it right now because I want to finish the other side. But I like to get the glue right around the middle here really good because you can see this is kind of bumped up and this is depth too. You have a little bit of recess. They meet. That's another reason I like this piece. There are any number of pieces that you could use and it would be fine, but this one I just especially like. And also another thing you can do is some people will hole punch it right here and then they can have a little dangle. We had some girls that did that. It was gorgeous. So what you want to do is you want to get glue right in here and then glue right in here and then put them together. You can use clamps if you want. Here's something very simple that I like to do is I like to just put it down on its face, glue it, glue it here, and just put it like that until I get it to start setting up. And then I'll turn it this way to see how it's going. And I'll kind of leave it alone for a little bit, see how it's working out. And then once that it gets going, I don't know how many of these little cups I've got. I guess I only brought, no, there, here they are. I use these a lot to prop things on. Once it starts to set up a little bit, I'll pull it over so I can see if it's going crooked because you don't want it set up like that. I'll get two of these little cups or you can get the bigger ones if you want and I will just kind of set it down in there. Another thing you do is put a little rice in the cups or ballantini or whatever you have that's real little like that. A lot of people just put rice and hold it once this is started to set up. And then you can kind of just get it into position exactly how you want it to be. Of course, it doesn't want to stay now because I haven't glued it yet. And then let it set. Let it set up and so it doesn't dry all crooked and weird, you know. So is that coming out okay? Probably because, oh, I can see right up here. Yeah, okay. So that's pretty much how it's going to look when you're done. I just have to finish a few things and glue it together. Then when it's all set up, before I do my embellishments, I usually do my embellishments like this stuff, the pearl chain and the little crystals. I usually do that last after I've diamond glazed it. And when I diamond glaze it, that's going to fall over now, but we don't need to worry about it. I will take another one of these little cups and I will fill it with diamond glaze. This is the big one, but you get little ones too. And I probably put the diamond glaze in it up to like three, between two and four. Or, you know, just eyeball it. And then use my sponge to just do the same thing like I did with Mod Podge. Just kind of dit dot at it till I've got it all on. And then after that cures, you know, sets up a few hours later. Actually, I always like to let things go overnight, but you can come back to and put another layer if you want. I wouldn't advise that you use a whole lot of diamond glaze on That's why I say on a sponge, because if you do a whole lot, what will happen? You have it in here and it's setting up. It'll all run back down to here. And then you have a big glob on each side. You have to sand it off and start over. Who wants to do that, right? So I'm trying to think of everything that could go wrong to tell you and how to fix it if it does. That's my thing, you know. So basically that's how it goes. I think this is pretty, especially after I fix it up a little bit. There you go. There's another one. Here's the first one I did. That showing up, Hobby? Yep. And then here's the second one I did that I still have a little bit of finished work to do on too. So you can see I did a lot of ice enamels on the sides.
So anyway, I hope you enjoy that. Javi will get you the skew for the indent cuff and the sweetheart plaque. And you can pick them up at the website. We have plenty in stock right now. And you can give it a shot. It's, um, it's a great project. And the thing is, once you do it once, you'll think of all kinds of other ways that you can go with it. And just make it completely your own. And you're going to love it. So anyway, I guess that's uh, pretty much the whole deal. Can you think of anything else that I missed that I need to tell them, Javi? No, I think you got everything. Okay. Well, if you guys have questions, be sure and post them because I watch. And um, just be nice to me. <laughs> I always worry about that, but I know I get hurt feelings too. I hate to say it, but I do. But anyway, most everybody is, and that's the wonderful thing. Um, subscribe. Then YouTube will send you alerts when we have a new one, and you can like it. And you can comment, ask me questions. I watch. YouTube sends me alerts. If you ask me a question, I will know right away. My computer will tell me. And I'll come up and try to answer it real soon. Okay? All right. You all have a wonderful weekend. This is a holiday weekend. So this is Memorial Day weekend, 2019. So you guys be careful. Okay, out there, if you go out, have some nice picnics, have fun, see your friends and family. We will be back here on Sunday for our regular live session. I can't remember the day. I think it's 27th on Sunday. No, 26th. Anyway, it's this Sunday. <laughs> it's a 4.30 p.m. EST. I hope you can make it because this week we're giving away a nice uh, drawing and it's a bunch of the new gingerbread brass. You don't want to miss mm -hmm. that. Yeah, you don't want to miss that. So anyway, okay, hope to see you on Sunday. Yay! Hey. Thanks for coming. Bye. Bye.